Hello and welcome to the tutorial video of uh, Schedule 3 Automation Tool. In this video, we will see how we can prepare a cash flow statement in the Schedule 3 Automation Tool. So, to prepare a cash flow for a once, uh, one year, you will require two years trial balance since cash flow is nothing but the moment of the opening balance and the closing balance. So, we'll just come to the trial balance in the Automation Tool. Now, in the trial balance, if you see, there is uh, first as a, there is a current year, current year and its grouping. Then if we scroll right, there is a previous year. After the previous year, there is a uh, cash flow grouping has been given. So uh, in the automation tool, uh, there is a two level of grouping for the cash flow. To prepare a cash flow, we will need to do a two level grouping. Level one grouping is going to happen automatically in the tool itself. Yeah, so this is the level one grouping. Level two grouping is uh, needs to be done only for the few certain ledgers. It will highlight to you in red itself that uh, this is one of the ledger professional fees expense. So this is grouped phase grouping for this has been given as a other expense. So when other expense grouping has been given, so at level uh, cash flow level level grouping, it will automatically come as a other expense at level two. That means you will have to select at the level two appropriate. Grouping. So from drop down list, we will have to select where do we want to classify whether this particular ledgers fall uh, falls under any of this above category so we can select the appropriate grouping for that if it doesn't fall under any of this category we can select as a other expense itself let's take one more example we have a other income so under the other income we can have a, a certain options like you can have a gain loss on sale of investment you can have a gain on sale of uh, a fixed asset sale then there can be interest income there can be a dividend income these are income which will be uh, uh, classified into the investing activity so that's why we will have to select the appropriate grouping over here so this grouping we will have to do for all the ledges the, the ledges where you need to do a grouping for at the level 2 those will be highlighted to you in red so once you have done that grouping then your cash flow we can come to the cash flow sheet your cash flow over here will uh, will get generated it will be mostly a tally so here we see, we can see that the cash flow for the current year as well as for the previous year has been captured now let me explain you what are certain adjustment required from cash flow perspective over here if you scroll further in the right there are total three tables has been given first table if you see this is the first table the first table says that you will have to give a classification of uh, exchange gain uh, loss so as per the accounting standard 11 whatever the uh, foreign currency that we have revalued or as on the balance sheet date so you will have to give a breakup for that because the whatever revaluation we do as on the balance sheet date as per that as 11 that is not uh, that is not the uh, any it is a non-cash item only so that we add back through the grouping uh, in the TB and we will have to give the bifurcation of that. So I have uh, in my case there is a one of the amount 8,41,000 is the amount that is uh, uh, effect of exchange rate and that is because of the two primary thing one is due to the trade receivable so I have given a breakup over here the amount uh, to the extent of trade receivable that we have mentioned over here then there is one more amount. Uh, as well under the trade payable so whatever the gain uh, exchange gain and loss effect is due to the trade payable that we will have to mention over here this is the one table there is one more table grossing up table now in our methodology what happens uh, the uh, cash flow gets generated from the tb itself so whatever your investing and financing activities amounts are being captured those are net for example during the year you have purchased the asset of 10 crore rupees and you have sold the asset of 5 crore rupees so it will just show to you net 5 crore impact only so to gross up that amount you if you want to show 10 crore as a purchase 5 crore as a sell so to show the both of the figures you will have to fill this table this is the grossing up table and here appropriate heads are given you can just mention the figures for that in our example there is one of the uh, asset we have purchased property plant equipment the the sale of the property plant equipment is of 52 lakhs 50 thousand rupees that we have mentioned over here and the impact of that if i just show to you you can see over here the impact of that prop in the purchase of property plant equipment comes a uh, 1 crore 48 lakhs and the uh, sale of property plant equipment comes as a 52 lakhs 50 thousand the amount which we have mentioned over here if you don't mention this amount then it will just give it to you the net figure only then there is one more third table bifurcation of gain loss on sale of investment now what happens whatever the gain loss on sale of investment that we have that we add back because that we need to show as a in uh, in the investing equity now that gain loss we are just adding back as a one line item only but then that it can be 
due to equity it can be due to the sale of mutual fund it can be due to the sale of preference share so simply you will have to give the breakup of that in my case i have this 70290 rupees is the gain that is primarily because of the equity investment so i have just given the breakup of that so once you mention this detail then your cash flow as per accounting standard 3 as per the indirect method will get tallied or you will get the tallied cash flow over here itself now i'll tell you one very important part over here since at the start i told you that to prepare a cash flow for one year you will require two years trial balance so to prepare a cash flow for previous year we will require preceding previous year also so that option has already been given in the tb itself in the tb further in right we have preceding previous year columns also and there is a preceding previous year grouping also available for the cash flow now when you are first time preparing financial for for any company in this automation tool so you of course will have a current year as well as previous year but just to prepare a cash flow to import data for the preceding previous year maybe little bit cumbersome activity so to uh, give you option that you can enter over here a cash flow manually also so here in the cash flow there is a column k uh, is available for the previous year if you want to enter Uh, the figures for the cash flow for a manually you can select yes over here if you select no then figures will it will take it up from the trial balance if you select yes over here then in this column in column k you will have to put the figures since we have entered this figures so you can, this will directly jump to the in this column this is the column which will be come into the financial part let's say if i select for current year also i want to prepare cash flow manual I, if i select yes so you can see since i have a blank over here amounts are coming blank if i select no so the amounts will come from the tb sheet now this is how your cash flow as per uh, in the schedule 3 automation tool go is going to be generated now there is one important thing with uh, reserve and surplus movement so during the year if there is any uh, amount which you have directly debited or credited to the reserve and surplus that is the below the line adjustment that can also have a impact on the cash flow so that we need to come to the reserve and surplus in qdis in qdis we give the movement of reserve and surplus under the movement of reserve and surplus you can just whatever amount that has a movement we are giving in the right further there is a option given cash flow grouping this is specific grouping available for uh, under the qdis for reserve and surplus per perspective itself this are certain uh, adjustment uh, being required for the below the line adjustment this can directly this doesn't come from the tb itself that's why we have to select the grouping for that over here so this is how you can prepare uh, the cash flow in the schedule 3 automation tool we can <coughs> just see that the best part of the tool is that since we are preparing a cash flow from tb itself it will always give you a tallied cash flow itself now let me uh, tell you one very interesting fact about the cash flow you can analyze your business life cycle also using the cash flow how is that thing can be done now in the business life cycle there are four phases one is the introduction then there is the growth phase of the company then there is a maturity phase of the company and then there is a decline phase of company now this can be denoted this can be analyzed using the cash flow if the company is into the development phase or maybe it's a introduction phase so of course their operating activities cash flow there will be a negative so there will be outflow because they are putting a money into the working capital there may be a losses so that uh, at that time there will be outflow in the investing uh, of course it's the first initial year of the company so they will be taking a money from their lenders maybe the borrowers maybe the shareholders so the financing activity will have a inflow and they are investing into the uh, property plant equipments or maybe some other plants and all so there will be a outflow so this is if this is the thing then you can say that the company is into the in uh, development phase if uh, the company is having the growth in the revenue and if they are having the positive cash inflow and they are uh, they having the outflow into the investing unit they are putting some money into the uh, development capital work in progress and all and they are even uh, repaying as a dividend and as a finance uh, to the lenders as a interest also so then they are maybe as a into the growth stage now this uh, into into the maturity stage maybe they are not doing any investment so investment is stagnant uh, they are giving back money to the as a dividend as well as uh, to the interest holder also they are giving money back but then the revenue uh, growth and pro net profit growth is stagnant in that stage and in the decline stage of course you may uh, a company may liquidate their asset maybe having certain inflow from their uh, operating activity also and they are just giving back money to the out lenders 
so now you go and check in your company in which stage the company is using the cash flow you can even do this thing thank you for watching this video